So, I decide to put a play on Aluber, and you decide to run to the theater? Hmm. Well, I welcome you to the theater of the Brendan. What's going on with ya, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that your day is going phenomenal. And if it isn't, well, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. Speaking of having a great day, budget players rejoice as Alibur Jester of Despia got a confirmed reprint in Ghosts from the Past 2. Now, I did tell you that you should sell that card before it plummeted price, admittedly, if you weren't in the uh, interact, then you may not have seen it until yesterday. But that video still has so much more information that you can use on cards you should sell. Without stopping the script, I'm gonna be showing you a competitive Despia deck profile post the Owlbash structure deck, as this deck is seriously one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's go ahead and jump on in so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So the reason why Despia is so cracked in the TCG post-structure deck Albaz is because of Branded Fusion. This card brings the deck so much more depth, allowing it to be easily searched, providing with so many more combos. Don't worry though, there are so many other decks that actually get a lot of power from Branded Fusion, and not only will I explain that next, I'll also talk about how Despia can make a huge impact in Master Duel. Starting off with the main board, the monsters consist of three copies of the newly announced reprinted Aluber Jester of Despia. This is the central piece of the deck as it allows you to search any of your branded cards from your deck to your hand. But one thing I genuinely want to point out that a lot of people sleep on with Aluber is that he can summon himself for the graveyard when one of your fusion monsters is destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effect and negate a monster on the field. This is actually amazing if your opponent has a monster like Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer or Wandering Griffin Rider on their side of the field and they get rid of one of your fusion monsters, you can summon Aluber and negate that monster's effect, which can be huge going forward inside of your game. Uh, keep in mind, if you do use one of those effects that turn, you can't use the other one. So if you do negate a monster effect, you won't be able to search and vice versa. Next is two copies of Despian Tragedy. I felt that two was very, very uh, good in here because we don't play a huge Despia package. And after you resolve the effect of the first tragedy, uh, more often than not, you don't necessarily need to resolve another. But with that being said, Despia Tragedy does serve multiple purposes in here, not only being able to get you a Despian monster from your deck to your hand, but also being able to set a branded card from your graveyard to your side of the field, another effect that a lot of people forget. Next is one copy of Dramaturge. This card is nasty good. Um, and as you should already know, if it's banished um, while adding, if it's banished in your hand or field, it can summon itself back to the side of the field. But its other effect, what a lot of people sleep on, is if a fusion synchro exceed or um, uh, Link Monster is special summoned. It doesn't have to be summoned correctly using its proper mechanic, meaning that if your opponent uses a monster like Monster or a card like Monster Reborn or summon a monster, you can trigger Dramaturge's effect. And then the next thing is if you summon a monster, let's say if you're using Branded in Red to Fusion Summon a Masquerade, uh, the Blazing Dragon to your side of the field, you can trigger Dramaturge's effect to negate any monster on the field. So really important uh, tidbits about the Despia cards that not a lot of players have been looking out for. And then of course, one copy of Abliptum. This card can increase the attack of all monsters on the field. You're, you're never, really, I, that's actually one thing about Abliptum. More often than not, you're never going to get that effect. But it can special summon a Despia, uh, a Banished Despia or Graveyard of Despia, or a, a fusion monster to your side of the field, and it isn't restricted to Despia monsters. So we can spell some monsters like Destiny or Phoenix Enforcer if you decided to go that route with that with this particular deck, banished to your side of the field. So that's pretty good. Um, that's it for the Despia monsters for the branded cards. Of course, three copies of branded fusion. That's actually what makes this deck completely pop. It is a uh, shit all fusion for the strategy, allowing you to get cards into your graveyard and trigger some great effects. We can make one card Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. We can make some other really great cards with this particular card and it gets our engine going. Three copies of Branded Opening. Um, this is probably the card that after you see it once, you don't wanna see it again. Uh, it does allow you to spell summon Aliver to your side of the field. And with that being said, you wanna play as many ways to get into your Aliver as possible. But it also does allow you to special summon Quer or Tragedy uh, to your side of the field or Abliptum or Dramaturge or add them to your hand if you wanted an additional play with your Guardian Chimera. So it does have that. 
But the most important effect that people do sleep on is that it protects your fusion monsters, bro. This card will bell you out so many times when you need your fusion monsters protected just by banishing branded opening. And then lastly, uh, for the art, second to last for the branded cards, only two copies of branded red. Um, I don't think that you need more than two copies because this card is so easily searchable. It's searchable through Aluber, which is searchable through Despian Tragedy and Branded Opening. So, um, and oh, and also Albion sets it to your side of the field. So you necessarily don't need it, uh, three copies, but two copies is a very solid uh, number. You'll activate it. You could activate it twice in a game. So that always comes up. And then Despian Theater of the Branded. This card, this card's actually really, really good as well. Um, you don't think that you need the fusion summon until this card comes up and you're like, yo, I'm a searchable uh, branded card that you can add to your hand and a free fusion summon without uh, that. Then the monster can attack directly, unlike the card or can attack, unlike the card used with branded in red. Um, Despia Theater is really good for being able to fusion summon monsters to your side of the field. And it's a searchable card. And what a lot of people do sleep on is that if one of your non-fusion fairy monsters is destroyed, it can spell summon a fusion monster to your side of the field. A lot of people sleep on some of these Despia effects. They really do come up. Uh, from time after time again and until players start paying respects for them you'll be able to punish them over and over again for not noticing these hidden effects uh next is two copies of there is a debate on how many copies of fallen albaz you should play i think two is actually a perfect number because a contrary to popular belief fallen albaz is not a brick it actually does have a really good effect to fuse with your opponent's cards if your opponent's already used the effect of destiny hero phoenix enforcer you can fuse with the phoenix enforcer and then you get rid of that particular problem um, it also has the ability to pretty much get rid of almost any threat or force certain negations in the game. And a lot of times this deck does not use his normal summon. So it's always very welcome to summon a fallen Albaz and sometimes either get more damage or get a negation. If not, just fuse off your opponent's card into a card that you need because there's a target for just about every great card in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game in this extra deck. There's also one copy of Sprinken's Kit. I actually think that this card is good as not only a starter and as an extender. It's a great starter because it does allow you to search your branded fusion from your deck to your hand, but it's also a good extender because even at your end sequence, as long as you summon a monster that has fallen Albaz in its card text, it's a free extender to be able to search cards like branded and red branded opening um, and allow you to continue on with your play. And then of course, since I do play Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, there's the Hex Seal Light Fusion in here. This card is actually not even a brick when you draw it because all you need to do is just get Fallen Albast to your graveyard, which is not hard. This card in your graveyard, you can still pretty much do the exact same thing. Um, I've never used its own summon effect, though you could and you can summon Lubellin. Unfortunately, it's a special summon. You wouldn't be able to get Lubellin's effect. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Moving on into the next engine, uh, I could play a Rite of Aramacer uh, Adventure Token engine in here. You could play a Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer engine in here. I actually went against those because uh, I didn't want to just show you another Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer Rite of Aramacer uh, deck. But I do think that this still has a place within the Despia strategy. So I'm actually going to be running uh, the Fright for Package. And the reason why is because when Polymerization is in the graveyard, Guardian Chimera pretty much becomes indestructible. And even before the Albash Structure deck, this particular strategy was doing fairly well at um, at events. And uh, the biggest reason is because Polymerization was in the graveyard, Guardian Chimera was indestructible. But also, um, this is actually really, really good for the strategy as it does allow you to play past your opponent negating your branded fusion. It allows you to fusion summon. To be honest with you, uh, the branded fusion a lot of times is bait. You just kind of get ashed on the branded fusion. And you're like, all right, well, let's just do something else. And you make some other boards that your opponent really has to deal with. And this is a really big part of being able to extend pass or make your board better. So many awesome combos with this deck. Now, I did decide to play quite a bit amount of disruption cards. Of course, the call by the grave for the hand traps and two copies of super polymerization. I genuinely thought about dropping these for Nibiru or just playing Nibiru and playing a 42 card deck. Um, the jury's still out on that. Uh, moving forward for the actual hand traps, there's three copies of Ash. Uh, three copies of Gamma. I feel like you have to play this card uh, because of how many spell cards you can activate without controlling monsters. I don't think your opponent will ever like Gamma a Fright for Patchwork, but it could happen. They might Gamma a Branded Opening because this card is actually pretty good. And they 100% will, or I'm sorry, they'll Ash uh, Fright for Patchwork or Opening. And they 100% should Ash Branded Fusion, like 100% of the time. And then you drop the Cypher and Gear Gamma to keep playing. It's also a really, really great hand trap in this format. And then three copies of Ghost Ogre because it's one of the most versatile, uh, best hand traps in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. 
that's it for the main board uh for the extra deck we're gonna go ahead and go through it fairly quick red eyes dark dragoon if you guys cannot afford red eyes dark dragoon um i wouldn't say that it's okay uh, actually no there are builds that don't play it so just drop the hexil light fusion drop to red eyes dark dragoon um it's perfectly fine i actually do like red eyes dark dragoon because it gives you another uh play outside of the opening play that the standard opening play that players do um it's fairly hard to get over and you literally don't have to play any bricks to play it i think that this is probably one of the best decks to be able to play this particular card one predator plant uh dragostapelio even if i didn't play super polymerization i'd still probably main board this card and i'll show you why uh one starving venom uh two copies of guardian chimera you can make it twice very easy inside of this deck amazing going second card um because it allows you to destroy so many cards or draw cards which can fix your hands um and also is just great when you go first and you can set it up with a branded in red one copy of spine the iron dash dragon and titan clad these are arguably the weakest extra deck spots as you're not going to fusion summon into these often but having the ability to be able to do this is very much there uh, in case when players start playing contact c and stuff like that and then still being able to get rid of some of your opponent's most problematic threats with a you know a simple albaz is still very much on the table uh, one mirror jade i didn't think that you needed more than one uh one copy of lubellion this card's also really good but i don't think you need more than one uh one or two copies of albion this card is completely cracked uh you'll use one for the dragoon combo and you'll use one for mirror jade uh one despian quaritus this card is also really good uh two copies of masquerade a lot of your boards will end up on um you know your contingency plans you'll make double masquerade and in this format, it's really crazy because some of the top decks, they need to be able to activate their spells and trap cards in order to progress through their game. And Masquerade completely prevents them from going through like the Fateful Adventure package. I think it's like 7,200 damage uh, for them to go through the full Fateful Adventure package, which obviously is not economical because then they want to play their normal card game. And it's it's ridiculous how this card works. And Pro Skininian is low-key in MVP because not only are these Despia monsters, keep in mind, these are super polymerization targets. If I summon a Despia monster and things go bad and you have a lighter dark monster on the field, well, super polymerization comes on the board and then I summon these guys. And this guy not only can summon my opponent's Destiny Roll Phoenix Enforcer, it can summon my opponent's Bet on the Floor. It can do so much in this card game, which is just completely cracked. But that is it for the main board and the extra deck. Of course, I'm gonna show you some combos and if you want to see this deck in action, go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. We may have a live duel brewing up for you. So there is a ridiculous amount of combos for this deck. I mean, an enormous amount. I'm gonna be showing you some of the very basics for this strategy because again, you gotta know the basics if you wanna be able to play this deck well. So um, you don't have to play Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, but for the players that are wondering how exactly would I summon Red Eyes Dark Dragoon without playing Dark Magician or Red Eyes, um, you can start off by activating Branded Fusion, sending both Hex Sealed and Fallen Albaz for a uh, Albion here. And then Albion will banish these two monsters because this is a dragon monster and this is a substitute for another monster. Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is free summon right here, which gives you a negation and an Albion. So the reason why I wanted to include this inside of the combo sequence is because a lot of people don't know exactly how do you make red eyes dark dragoon in this deck why is red eyes dark dragoon going up in price why was it um why was hex seal going up in price at one point in time this is the reason why and if you add more to it like if you had a monster like i don't know fright for patchwork you can go like fright for patchwork into polymerization into edge imp and then fuse both of these two with the polymerization into a pride plant dragostapelium and then in phase, or I'm sorry, Edge Imp will trigger to get the patchwork. And then in phase, you can go ahead and add a card like Branded Opening, which not only gives you a disruption, uh, if you didn't have any other cards at end, this is a free disruption, but also it allows you to use Branded Opening to be able to discard the patchwork, to summon Alubur, to gain another search. Maybe you want a card like Branded Fusion if you add other cards in your hand to discard. So that's exactly how that would work in that particular situation. But again, there are so many combos with this deck. It is ridiculous. I'm going to show you how Branded Fusion is a one card combo in itself. Uh, I'm sorry, a one and a half card combo. You need Fusion in any card to discard. Let's go ahead and say this is our third patchwork. We don't need we don't have any other cards to dis or we don't have any ways to resolve its effect. We're going to go ahead and start off by activating Branded Fusion, using its effect to send Despian Tragedy from the deck to the graveyard, as well as a Fallen Albas. And with that, we'll be able to special summon Lubellion to our side of the field. 
will trigger the effect of Lubellian as Chain Link want to, and Despian Tragedy as Chain Link one. We'll add the Alibur from our decks to our hand, then we'll discard the Patchwork to fuse both the Albas and the Lubellian into a Mirror Jade. So the reason why this is so powerful here is because in the end sequence, we'll normal summon Alibur. We'll use its effect to be able to get a Branded in Red from our decks to our hand. And then on our opponent's turn, after we set Branded in Red, we can activate it to get the Despian Tragedy. We'll even use, oh, well, let me go back. We can use the Mirror Jade to send, uh, where is that card? To send Albion to get a free disruption. Then we'll activate the Branded in Red. We'll add the Despian Tragedy. And then we can fuse all three of these. This would go to Graveyard. These would get banished into a monster like Guardian Chimera, which would allow us to get uh, at least two destructions in one draw. We'll also get a search with the effect of Despian Tragedy, which will allow us to get our most famous monster, which is Aluber. And then the effect of Albion will also uh, resolve. We can set a branded fusion or branded opening to our side of the field, which is huge for this deck. As you can see, this deck has a ton and a ton of power. So uh, there's also a combo if you just so happen to just draw Alibur, which is still ridiculous for this deck, how many times this deck has a combo inside of it. We're gonna go ahead and start off by normal summoning Alibur. Alibur, get branded fusion, activate the branded fusion, guys. What we will do is go through the normal things. We'll send Despian Tragedy. Of course, you need a card in your hand to discard. My apologies. You'll send the Despian Tragedy and the Fallen Albaz here. We will Fusion Summon into our Lubellion and then trigger the effect of Lubellion and then Despian Tragedy. This time around, we're going to add the Adliptum. This card actually is ridiculously powerful for this deck. And then we'll discard the Fright for Patchwork to fuse these two. Go ahead and fusion summon into your mirror jade again. Boom. And then I just get in here. Okay, that was already activated. Use the effect of mirror jade to banish the Alibur. Now you're probably wondering why would I do that? Because not only do I waste the effect of mirror jade here, it can't be used again the following turn. I also lost an Alibur and only gained the effect of Albion to be able to set Branded in Red from my deck to my side of the field. So there's a cool thing with Mirror Jade. If it is removed from the field and comes back, then it will be able to gain its effect again to get rid of a card uh, by sending a card that has Despia in its card name uh, from the extra deck to uh, the graveyard. So that actually does come up a lot as on our opponent's turn, we will be able to activate Branded in Red here. We will add the Despian Tragedy and then we'll banish the Mirror Jade, the Tragedy, and the Abliptum into a Guardian Chimera. Congratulations, you can destroy two here, or you can destroy one, and then we can special summon the Mirror Jade, and we can also add from our decks to our hand. We can add an Alber from our decks to our hand in this particular sequence, and then still use the effect. Oh, I forgot, we gotta draw two cards. And then oh, we can still use Mirror Jade to send to the graveyard again, which is completely phenomenal for a deck like this. It has so many amazing combos built inside. So there's still more for this deck, which again, it, it's just so amazing how this deck does come up and play the hardest. So I'm going to show you how the Fright for Package is completely bonkers for this deck. I'm going to show you a combo that doesn't necessarily look like full combo, but uh, it's full combo. There's multiple routes you can go with this. I'm going to show you the Dragoon combo because this is the one I, I kind of like the Dragoon combo best. Um, we're going to start off with Branded Opening, sending Edgem Chain from the hand to the graveyard on res resolution. Keep in mind this sends on the graveyard on resolution. We'll special summon Alibur and then use Alibur's effect to get Branded Fusion. And then, of course, Edgem Chain will get us right for Patchwork. We'll then go ahead and activate Fright for Patchwork to be able to add a Polymerization and an Edge of Chain from our decks to our hand. And then we'll activate Branded Fusion. The reason why I like this a little bit more is because even if our Branded Fusion does get hand trapped, we still have a play right here. Masquerade is actually ridiculously scary and I'll show you in another combo. But um, we're gonna go ahead and activate Branded Fusion. I'm gonna send the requirements uh, to the graveyard to be able to special summon Albion here. And then we'll use the effect of Albion to banish the Hex Sealed 
and Albas to be able to fusion summon into Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. And then from here, we'll just go ahead and we'll polymerize both the Albion and the Aluber Jester of Despia. We'll fuse those two right into a Predaplant Dragostapelia. During the end phase, the effect of uh, branded uh, Albion the Branded Dragon will activate. We'll go ahead and get a Branded Arant. So the reason why I like this combo is because not only do you have a discard outlet for Red Eyes Dark Dragoon if you so choose, you can still go ahead and activate Branded in Red here. And then after you use the effect of a monster like Dragostapelio, you can add the Aliber Jester of Despia, then banish all three. Here is your Guardian Chimera to be able to destroy two cards on the field, or one card on the field, draw two cards after you've already disrupted your opponent twice, which I think is completely incredible for this deck. Now, even with the new stuff in Branded Fusion, there's still one super underrated combo that not a lot of people are paying attention to. It's actually just fusion summoning into Masquerade twice. And another reason why I really like Fright for Patchwork here is because I'm gonna show you a particular combo where you can literally punish your opponent. Let's say for some reason we activated Branded Fusion and our opponent went ahead and Ash Blossom negated us. It happens a lot, trust me. So the reason why we play Cypher and Gear Gamma in this deck, they are going to be looking for this card hard. Cool. Go ahead and activate Fright for Patchwork. Patchwork will add Polymerization and Edge of Chain. And then we're going to go ahead and polymerize both our Edge of Chain and our Despian Tragedy. We're going to fuse those into Masquerade number one. Trigger the effect of Edge of Chain as Chain Link 2. Tragedy is Chain Link 1. It almost doesn't matter. They've already Ash Blossomed us. Uh, we'll go ahead and add a Fright for Patchwork. And then we will add from our decks to our hand, where is that Aluber? We'll add the Aluber. We'll then summon Aluber to our side of the field, use its effect to add Branded in red. Oh, and look at here. You can either activate this right now or you can set it and wait till your opponent's turn. On the opponent's turn, use Branded in red, add the Despian Tragedy, and then fuse both of these monsters into our second Masquerade, triggering the effect of Despian Tragedy to be able to add the Aluber Jester of Despia. So what exactly does this situation do? Well. First of all, these Masquerade Dragons are, are kind of hard to beat. They're a little beefy. 2,000 defense, 2,500 attack. Whether you put them in attack, whether you put them in defense, all up to you. Regardless, pretty beefy cards and hard to beat. Secondly, your opponent must pay 1,200 life points in order to activate card effects. Per card effect. If your opponent is going through the Adventure Token Engine, good luck with that. As they're going to lose most of their life points just going through that engine before they even start into your normal plays. This is extremely good against decks like Prank Kids. It's great against decks like Base. And it's an amazing fallback option, which is why I built this deck to be able to fuse even after your branded fusion play does get disrupted. And why I do think that Fright for Patchwork still has a place despite players running the Adventure Token Engine or Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. Um, another thing to note is that uh, this deck is ridiculously good on the follow-up because you have the Aliber Jester of Despia to be able to add your second brand in infusion. So please have that Ash Blossom another time. You're going to pay for it regardless. And that is all that I have for this deck profile. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then don't worry. I got so much more. Master Duel Cali might be coming with some Despia Spice so really check that one out. I also just might have a live duel so you can sit back, relax, and watch Despia be amazing. Of course, if you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out these videos as I'll catch you on the next one.